Hey, Anita here. Let's worship. Whoa! Worship is celebrating God by giving Him your time or attention. You spoke one word and the dark became light. I believe it, I believe it, yeah. You spoke my name and my heart came to life. I believe it, yeah I wanna sing about it I wanna scream and shout it that song but music is just one of the hundreds of ways that you can worship God in fact a few months ago Jonathan and Grant explored eight ways that you can worship God check it out hey my name is Jonathan Grant and today we're gonna show you eight ways that you can worship God worshiping is giving God your time and attention watch till the end of the video to find out why worship is so important Okay, we got one minute to draw a picture for God. Or about God. Or with our attention on God. Right. Ready? Uh, let's go. Okay. All right, show, let's show them off. All right, let me see. Okay, okay. So right. you drew a picture of a church? Yeah, I'm gonna do a church on a hill, uh -huh. uh, just in the sunshine. I like it. Very, very good. I drew an island. Cause God made islands, and then do you like my, my Ooh. dolphins? I'm very proud of that. I like the palm tree. The tree's fantastic. I don't like a What's the water? 
the water, you know, ah, I love the ocean and the outdoors. And so when I was trying to get a little mountain right there, whether it's from the mountains all the way to the beach, Jesus is there with you every step of the way. Worship. All right, we have one minute to make a list to think of as many things as we're thankful for. Okay, let's give thanks to God. Let's do it. All right. Okay. All right. Let's see what we got. I had, so. let's see, coffee, peace, faith, frisbee, brownies. I love cheese. Cheese is good. Cake, ice cream, art, music, peanuts, and can't forget bagels. That's like a really good list. Mine, um, mine was less mature. Um, food, my kids, my home, oh. toots, bathrooms. Uh, church, mech, animals, elephants, peacocks, the Tar Heels, basketball, football, and hockey. So, Ooh, hockey. Yours is, yours is way more Jesus-y than mine. Okay, so we've got a video of a crew dance worship song, okay. and we've got to watch it and then attempt it while after just watching it once. All right. We can do that. Yeah. I think we got it. Let's go for it. Okay. okay. Oh. That's the I got it. I think I got it. I think I did it. <laughs> nice. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was good. Was that good? Okay, now it's your turn. Stand up and worship God.
Why hello there, welcome to Scripture Snacks with your boy Grant. Today, I'll give you a yummy snack of scripture while I snack on something yummy. Our scripture snack is from the book of Psalms, chapter 136, verse one in the Bible. Time to snack. Give thanks to the Lord because he is good. His faithful love continues forever. Mm, now that is scrumptious. You know what else is scrumptious? Mac and cheese. All right, it's ready. For this worship method, we're gonna do a haiku for God. What's a haiku? Uh, yeah, nobody really knows, but it's, the internet says that haiku is a short, unranked poem that adheres to a specific three-line, 17-syllable format, five first, seven on the second, five on the third, and it focuses on like this brief moment in time, juxtaposing two images, creating a sudden sense of enlightenment. Okay. I think we just gotta write like a little three-line poem that doesn't rhyme. That works. Yeah, let's go for it. So we've got our, we got our mm -hmm. poems. You ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, here's mine. I see God do things. It is beyond what I do. He's greater than me. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I, I actually I, felt like I, that was a pretty good one. I like it. I like yeah. it. Okay. Okay, give me yours. All right, here we go. God thunders on high. I thunder differently. His thunder stinks less. Is that about toots? The Bible says, Praise him by blowing trumpets with harps and lyres, tambourines, stringed instruments, flutes, clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So let's worship God with some uh, musical instruments. All right, here we go. <laughs> Take it away. <clears throat> All right, my turn. <clears throat> I think the point that um, we're trying to get across is that it doesn't matter how well you play the musical instruments, it's just that worship is about giving your attention to God and not, not about how well you play. Hey, I'm Zeke. And this is Carter. Carter. Carter! Hey, I'm Carter. Yeah, they got that. Uh, great. This week we're talking about gratitude, which is letting others know you see how they've helped you. And speaking of helping people, hey, Zeke, want to help me bust a move? Uh, I tried busting a move at school yesterday and everyone laughed, including the teacher. <sighs> Dancing is fun and really good for you. Not so sure it's good for my self-esteem. Actually, dance is scientifically proven to help improve your mood and help your body. What does science have to do with dance? Glad you asked. Let's do it! For today's experiment, we have a couple special guests. Everybody give a round of applause for our dancers extraordinaire, Jaden and Malachi. Hey guys. Happy to be here and ready to do this. Today, Malachi and Jaden will be showing us some of the science behind dance. Yep, see, we're wearing heart monitors. Which are connected to this screen. Pretty nifty setup. Right? First, our friends are gonna show us a few different dance styles so we can see how each different style creates a different result. Now, our friends are stretching here because it's really important to stretch before any kind of physical activity, like dance. I'm ready to go. Just say the word. Perfect. First up, ballet. Hit it. For 
this song, notice how Malachi's heart rate stays pretty low. The moves are focused on big motions like bows and leg lifts. Dance can require a lot of flexibility, which is why it's always important to stretch before dancing. Bravo! Bellissimo! Grazie! Grazie! I'm up next! Great! Let's see some jazz! Notice how her heart rate speeds up with the faster music. The faster the tempo, the higher the heart rate. Your heart pumps blood, which carries oxygen throughout the body. The harder you dance, the more oxygen your body needs. That was awesome! Thank you! And now for our grand finale, Hip Hop Go! Notice how their heart rate is getting faster and faster. They're really moving. And they look like they're having a blast. Science shows that when we dance, our brain releases a chemical that helps improve our mood. They're great for brain health. Happier brain for a happier you. That was great. You guys are like dancing machines. I mean, I might need you guys to teach me how to dance. Thanks, man. It was fun. You're welcome. Feel free to come by the studio. We got to go. We'll see you later. All uh, right. Bye, guys. Wow. So, are you ready to bust the move yet? Uh, maybe later, because now it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of 2 Samuel which tells the story of David. While David was still a boy, God chose a man named Saul to rule over Israel. But Saul didn't listen to God. So God sent the prophet Samuel to anoint David as a sign that he would one day be king of Israel. After David defeated the giant Goliath, Saul chose David to lead his army. David won lots of battles. The people loved him. But Saul became jealous. He even tried to kill David. David spent years running from Saul, but during that time, even more people chose to follow David. At last, Saul was killed in battle, and David became the new king of Israel. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Oh, hey everyone, I'm Brian. Hey, get ready to boogie down, because this week's story is all about a dance sensation that rocked a nation. After David became king, he reclaimed Jerusalem and completely rebuilt the city. David fixed the walls, built a palace, the whole shebang. But something was missing, the Ark of the Covenant. This beautiful gold-covered chest held the tablets with the Ten Commandments given to Moses. The Ark represented God's home among the people. But the Ark had been captured by the Philistines and later taken to the house of Obed-Edom for a few months. Now David knew the time had come to bring it home. Gather your men. The ark must be brought to Jerusalem, for we shall hold a great celebration in honor of God. At once, my king. David traveled with the people of Israel to retrieve the ark. As soon as the religious leaders got the ark situated on its poles, the whole group set out for Jerusalem. But after only six steps with the ark, David started dancing before God with all his might. In fact, he danced all the way to Jerusalem, celebrating all that God had done. David partied harder than anybody else, yeah. And when he got to Jerusalem, the whole city joined in the celebration. <laughs> Trumpets blast, people danced, and later David gave out food and, and raisin cakes. Everybody had a blast. Everybody, mm, except David's wife, Michael. Michael, who was King Saul's daughter, thought David's dancing made him look weak and foolish. After the celebration, she faced him down. So you're supposed to be the king of Israel? <laughs> Look at you, dancing around like a cheap clown in front of your servants and officials. You acted like a fool. I danced to honor the Lord. He chose me instead of your father. Rude. I will celebrate to honor the Lord, and I won't stop. Those servants and officials you spoke about will honor me even if you do not. <laughs> Safe to say Michael was not convinced, but hey, David didn't back down. 
He used dance to celebrate all God had done for him and for the people of Israel. The end. Wow. David cared more about giving a big shout out to God than what the people thought of him. I wonder if David was a good dancer. <laughs> well, you know, the awesome thing is, it doesn't really matter. He was just celebrating God. So what's our part in the story? Well, there are many ways that we can celebrate what God has done. You can dance for sure, but you can also share with others what God has done in your life. You can even use the talents that God has given you as a, as a way of celebrating. Any way you choose to celebrate God is A-OK. -okay. God loves you no matter what. But what kinds of things should we celebrate? Everything. God's given us so much food to eat, bodies so we can dance, people who love us. And we can always celebrate what God has done by sending Jesus to be our savior. But what if our way of celebrating makes us look, I don't know, goofy? Look at me, doesn't matter. <laughs> if you enjoy doing something to celebrate God, don't worry what others think. God made you just the way you are. Yeah, so sing, dance, ride a unicycle if that's your thing. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think you got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing. Celebrate what God has done. Right, Zeke? Zeke? Oh well. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. When you hear something from the Bible, ask three questions. What does this show me about God? God deserves your worship. He deserves your time, attention, and honor. What does this show me about me? You were created to celebrate God. This is huge. Most people get it upside down. Thinking about God in terms of what he can do for you, listen to you, protect you, help you, give you things. And yes, God is a good God who loves you and does stuff for you. But the truth is you are not God. And instead on focusing on what God can do for you, focus on what you can do for him. Specifically celebrate him, worship him. What should I do now? Celebrate God. That begins with choosing to follow him by admitting that you're not perfect and that you believe Jesus is God and died and rose again and can forgive you for your sins. And then choosing to follow God with your life and to live God's way instead of your way. But that's just how it begins. Look for ways to celebrate God through music, dance, art, sports, whatever. Make your life focused on God. Pray to him, thank him for stuff, obey him, celebrate him. And I will see you next week.